Hi, welcome to another edition of In the Studio with Calamity Jane. My name is Jody, also known as Calamity Jane. Our purpose with this series is to find amazing women in our community and give them the spotlight for a moment. Joining me today is Gabby Foster from Jalen's Gift Foundation. Welcome to the show, Gabby. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me today. So Gabby, tell us a little bit about Jalen's Gift Foundation. Jalen's Gift Foundation is a nonprofit organization based in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, that helps families after the loss of a baby. And this can be during an early miscarriage after the first year of loss. And we pretty much provide services such as financial assistance or burial costs. We also go into the hospitals and provide photography to capture the first and last moments of a baby's life. We also provide the hospitals uh, little care packages. So when the mom walks into the hospital, they have memories and a little memory box of keepsakes. Um, and we also provide the grief support aspect so they know that they're not alone. How did you come to start Jalen's Gift? I started the foundation after the loss of my son Jalen. He was our third child and our first boy. And no parent ever has a plan B. No one ever tells you what do you do after you lose a baby. And no one ever expects to lose a baby. So one day we walked into the hospital pregnant and walked out empty handed. And we were so surprised to find out the lack of resources in the community. So my husband and I decided to become that number and that place the families can come and go. I literally Googled how to start a nonprofit organization. And we just wanted to provide a safe place for moms to come after the loss of a baby. That's beautiful. And it's such important work that you're doing. Sorry. It's okay. You want to take a minute? No, it's just that it's good talking about him. Sometimes I forget. Like, I forget that, you know, that I lost a baby. Because I'm always so focused on helping so many other families that I forget that. That he's, that I was there. So. <laughs> Thank you. What do you think makes you successful? What makes me successful with the foundation is the drive and the compassion of helping others. Because I have been there. I have been that mom that have been helpless. And to know that another family can feel that way is what drives me. Um, and when we get that thank you, when we get that sincere thank you and that hug, when they tell us thank you for being there, thank you for that memory box, thank you for helping us with that urn, thank you for the support, just a sincere thank you lets us know that we are making a difference. What one piece of advice would you give to somebody who's watching this that may want to start an organization based on something that they're passionate about? My advice is for them to just do it. It's scary, but if you have that burning desire, just go ahead and do it. For me, I literally Google how to start a nonprofit organization. Um, now I know that there's many businesses out there that can help you and can help you with that guidance of the paperwork because a nonprofit is a business. There's a lot that has to go with paperwork wise. So I recommend that you just do it. Follow your heart, follow your passion, and just go for it. What is your favorite word? Compassion. Compassion is what drives me. Compassion is what creates love for me. So my favorite words to hear, compassion. I love that. What is your least favorite word? Bitch. <laughs> that is definitely one word that I do not like to hear. It's really demeaning to women. And it's just mean. So I don't like that word at all. Okay, um, what turns you on creatively, emotionally, or spiritually? Helping others. It, I live for making a difference in someone's life. So it fulfills me emotionally and spiritually. And it does allow me to be creative as well because it allows me to find different ways to help people. Not everyone's receptive the same way. So some people react differently. So I have learned to find creative ways to reach everyone in their own unique way. That's a real talent, by the way. Huh? Oh, thank you. I'm talented. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so what turns you off? <sighs> when people don't want to help themselves. I sometimes just wonder by the ones that complain and complain and complain. 
But if you don't want to make a change, and if you don't start that change, nothing's going to happen. So it turns me off that you're just stuck there. If you're willing to get help, people will help you. What is your favorite curse word? <laughs> oh, I love to say fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Whoever made up that word, it's amazing because it's a great way to get everything out. Just fuck. <laughs> That's my favorite word. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? I love the sound of water. It is just relaxing. It makes me feel like I'm with nature. So just the sound of water and rain. It just, I love it. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh, the sound of someone just grabbing the nails against that uh, chalkboard and just uh, all the way down. Yeah, it like, gives me chills down my spine. What profession, other than your own, would you maybe like to someday attempt? Well, I am a very driven person. So I have become a speech therapist and now I'm working towards becoming a clinical social worker. So I think in my future, I would like to maybe be a doctor. I would love to be like a brain surgeon or something. That's something that I would love to do. I am so infatuated with the brain. So I think maybe like a brain surgeon. Who knows? It sounds like you could do pretty much anything. Yeah, you know, but if you put your mind to it, you can. That's true. Can. What profession would you never like to do? I would not like to be a pooper scooper. <laughs> it's just, I don't have the patience for it. It's just, it seems like it's tedious, but I mean, if someone has to do it, which I respect the profession, but it was just not just for me. I can't just walk around and do it. So I could never be a pooper scooper. <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I can just visualize that moment, but I would love for God to say, here's your son. You know, when, when you lose a child, you have that hope that you'll be able to be connected again and reconnect and, and see each other. And I can't wait for that moment when God is like, here is your son. And I can just run up to him and hug him and kiss him. So I look, I look forward to that day. I really do. <laughs> what age do you envision Jalen being when that happens? For some reason, like two or three. Like I want him like in a toddler stage, like always, you know. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Want, I want him to be able to run <laughs> to me, because you know he died as a baby. So I can just see him like call me mom and just hug him. There's a there's a song that's called Hug Him Once for Me. And it's, it's a mom singing to God, telling God to please hug my baby, put him on your lap, and tell him that we love you and that we love him too. And that's one of my husband's favorite songs. And we always tell God, you know, hug him once for me and just tell him that we love him. So just for him to be able to just run to me and hug me and call me mom. So. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's what we, what we look forward to. You know, it's part of the healing. Yeah. Part of the healing. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today, Gabby. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure and honor being here today. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Join us for the next edition of In the Studio with Calamity Jane, where we put another amazing woman from Las Vegas in the spotlight. Mm -hmm.